What's up YouTube, Clickwood here, back again, bringing you guys a new video, something that I don't really do usually on my channel, and that is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. This game's been about, about what, a week and a half now, and I'm having a pretty good time playing it. I'm not great at it, but you guys are going to be watching some Team Deathmatch here as that I played with my friend XRyan915, who is a fellow Madden YouTuber. Uh, he's much better at this game than I am, but he actually didn't have the best game here, and I had a much better game, so I wanted to upload that to make myself feel better. No, no, I'm just joking guys. It was just a fun game and it was a really close one So I hope you guys enjoy that as I talk here in the background But uh, what I want to actually talk about is roster mania and some of the things that are happening in the competitive call of duty scene Specifically optic gaming the biggest call of duty brand that there is they've made some significant moves here in roster mania And if you guys are unfamiliar with what roster mania is it's basically the time between the seasons that they play So there's a lot of free agent acquisitions. There's a lot of trades and that kind of thing that happened uh, and this time there was actually a major major move that was made evil geniuses which is also known well previously known as complexity ended up dropping all four of their players on friday from their contracts which are aches tp uh, karma and crim six and all four of them have found homes on new teams but what we're specifically going to be talking about is the team that Karma, or excuse me, that Crim6 landed on, and that is Optic Gaming. So, if you guys are unfamiliar, Optic Gaming, Nadeshot is the biggest name in Call of Duty Esports. He is, I mean, he's probably not one of like the top best players, but he's, I mean, obviously he's good enough to be a professional Call of Duty player. But he's mostly known for his YouTube channel and just being a generally entertaining and nice dude. So that's where he's made the majority of his notoriety. And then there's Optic Scumpy, who is arguably the best player in all of Call of Duty. This dude is an absolute animal. He's been playing with a team that hasn't necessarily suited his playing style as well. And this new team that they're assembling could be the most dominant team in the history of call of duty a lot of people are predicting it they added formal who was formerly a member of team envious and there was a lot of controversy with how that whole thing ended up happening uh but formal is now a member of optic gaming he is also well towards the end of call of duty ghost i should say he was definitely known as one of the top players most people would say he was one of the top five players an amazing slayer, a guy who just racks up the kills along with Scumpy, and they are going to be joining Crim6. Crim6, unfriggin' believable player. Most people say he is one of the top two players. It's usually between him and Scumpy. So now you're talking about the number one, the number two, and probably another top five player. Some people would say he's the third best player in formal on that roster. And then, of course, you have Nade Shot who, like I said, isn't necessarily known as being one of the elite, elite players, but he's still very, very good, underrated in a lot of ways, definitely one of the best objective players, and certainly underrated for his search and destroy game, which is uh, uh, obviously a big part of competitive Call of Duty. So you've got an amazing roster here for these guys. Uh, I'm going to be very, very surprised if they don't step out right away and start crushing in these tournaments that are coming up. Uh, at the end of this month, there's going to be MLG Columbus, which is the first major land tournament for Advanced Warfare. And I'm really expecting that these guys here on Optic Gaming are going to do an amazing job. Because, uh, I mean, like I said, they've got so much slaying power on this team. Crim6 brings a level of professionalism and composure and also just like just the ability to know how to win this guy spent the last year on the evil geniuses and complexity roster uh like i said it kind of like it transitioned like halfway through the year they were bought out by the company evil geniuses and then uh like i said they ended up dropping their entire roster to allow them to go to different teams for a variety of reasons but mostly because they did not want to play with one another anymore so uh it's very interesting though that they decided to end up on optic gaming now that's not to say that optic gaming doesn't it's not that it doesn't make sense it's that it basically you see a team like optic gaming and they had this team house okay they they have a house in the suburbs of chicago and they have a couple guys living there with them and one of them was proofy and proofy was a member of the active roster on optic gaming he was one of the four there was proofy clayster scumpy and nade shot they actually dropped Clayster and Proofy to make this move. 
Now, Proofy was then picked up by the sister team of Optic, which is Optic Nation, and he will still likely be, I think it sounds like he's still going to be living in the house, so I think it's going to be a little bit awkward between those guys because, uh, you know, like I said, Proofy's been playing with them for the past few months, and they've been performing fairly well. They won X Games, and, uh, you know, it's it's one of those types of things where you really look at how these teams come together, and it, it's an impressive thing that Optic Gaming was able to actually acquire so many of the top players without really doing a whole lot of damage to their brand. Everybody seems to be pretty okay with the moves that they made, whereas some of these other brands, they might have made some moves that were not so exciting for the fans of those teams, or maybe not even the fans, just the critics, or the, the general fan of Call of Duty competitive. So, uh, yeah, you like I said, you look at this roster, though, and you've got just dominant, dominant slaying power. I think there's going to be a real opportunity for Nayshot to show what he can do as an objective player, a pure objective player, almost in the role of, you know, like a, a, a karma, or not a karma, excuse me, a sensor. Uh, because I think sensor really has changed the way that a lot of people look at the objective role. Because this dude will go out there and he will have a terrible game in terms of kill-death ratio but he will put up monster numbers in terms of captures or, uh, you know, like if he's on, if they're playing a, a domination in, in uh, Ghosts or now they're playing hard point and he does a great job of getting onto those hard points. And a lot of times he'll, go, like I said, go negative with kill death ratio, but he's getting so many of the objectives. And when they pay, play capture the flag, he's getting so many of those. And, and uh, it just, it changes the way that you look at how this game is played. But with Nadeshot, he's kind of had to take a role as being more of a slayer. Not that he can't slay, and not that he still wasn't being their primary objective player, but because they weren't overall slaying as well as what this new team likely will, uh, he's been having to kind of dual roll it, and I think it's going to be interesting. Because like I said, I think he, there's going to be some games where you see Nadeshot go like 5-20. And he's going to have some uh, impressive numbers as far as, like, your captures and uh, and that kind of thing. But he's really not going to do much for kill-death ratio. And it's going to be interesting to see how people take that. And if teams start to really look at Nadeshot as being, um, a, a, well, not necessarily even the teams. Because I think for the most part, most players have a lot of respect for him. But fans, if they start to look at that role as being a little bit more important than it currently seems... Uh, most people look at the Slayers, and like I said, you've got your Crim6 and your Formal and your Scumpy on this team. Some of the top, absolutely top Slayers in this entire game. And all three of those guys are going to be leading the way for Nadeshot to be running those objectives. And he could put up some crazy numbers this year, some really fun numbers to watch. It could be, like I said, one of those things where it's like he's pretty much not getting any kills, but yet they're still winning the game. And as long as he's able to keep his composure, I do think that Optic Gaming is going to have a lot of success in Season 1 here. And I do think that, they, like I said, that they'll have a good opportunity but to potentially make a run at some of these land tournament championships. Nate Shot has talked about it, that he wants to win the big one, which is COD Championships. Of course, all the other members of this team do. And it's going to be really interesting to see if it pans out with this roster. I'm really excited to see what happens, guys. What do you think about this move? Are you excited for Optic Gaming's new roster here, or would you rather have seen them stick with Clayster and Proofy over your Crim6 and your Formal? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys like this video. If you do, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm new to doing Call of Duty videos, but I want to continue doing them because they're a lot of fun for me. So I hope you guys are enjoying them. Thank you guys again, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.